The Armed Forces Radio Service presents a discussion on infantry tactics and maneuver the enemy infantry, enemy infantry, plane and tank recognition, plane and tank recognition, plane and detail. Take a break, guys. It's a GI Journal. Yes, sir, the G.I. Journal goes to press. For the five-star staff of your favorite reporters, a few notes will be jittered down by Ella May Moore. The market page will show a curve for the better with Gloria Bondell. There'll be a tall edition of Arthur Treacher and a big spread of Bob Benchley. In addition, we'll hear the regulars, Private Sad Sack Mel Blank, Connie Haynes and the Mel Tone, music editor Dick Arant, yours truly Harry Mitchell, and... G.I. Journal... You want me to connect you with the editor-in-chief? Well, I don't blame you. Anybody would like to be connected with this week's editor, Miss Joan Blondell. <laughs> yes, Joan is running the G.I. Journal this week, and we find her in the office with her sister, Gloria. Suddenly, the door opens. Oh, brother, look, sister. Oh, man, now I got a date. I saw him first. He's mine. No, he's mine. He's mine. He's mine. Yeah, hello, girl. He's, he's yours. yours. But, uh, don't, don't fight over me, girl. I'm Joan Blondell. Is there anything I can do for you? Uh, yeah, but but with me, who would believe it? Look, uh, what do you want here? Uh, I want to put an ad in a G.I. Joyner. Uh, possession one. I see. Okay, give, give me the ad. Yeah, a young man with low forehead uh, would like a job as tobacco auctioneer. Are you kidding? What experience have you had as a tobacco auctioneer? Uh, all my life I've been going... <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy who really uses his head. Yeah, for driving tent pegs. Come in. Hiya, gal. Well, if it isn't the cow cow boogie girl, Ella Mae Moore. <laughs> well, Joan, Gloria, gee, why do you girls look so down? Let me some skin with a grin. We're pretty unhappy, Ella Mae. Men. Why, it's worse than the cigarette shortage. You should see the women lined up in front of the Boy Scout headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you gals had better get hep to what's happening. What? What? Well, you can't get any place dressed like that. You've got to be in uniform to meet the right boys. That's an idea. Why don't you see what it's like being nervous in the service? It's a deal. Ellen May, you take over the paper while Gloria and I run down and enlist. Okay, girls. And just to give you a military send-off, here's Captain Kidd. There was a guy who sailed the ocean He used to raise a big commotion Doing the things the law forbid The character was known as Captain Kidd He'd sing a boat to get the jewelry He wouldn't stand for no time for a nobody found the loot he had. A lucky buccaneer was Captain Kidd. He used to make with the skull and bone. To him it was a merry prank. And just to get a laugh from David Jones, he made his life a boogie woogie off the plane. He got his kick from playing pirates. Carried a gun and liked to fire it. Thought he was smart, but what he did was he was only kidding. Captain Kidd, you'll never find his name up in the Hall of Fame. It was the greatest mystery of history. He never got nowhere, being a hip was there. But here's a clue to how he made his Waterloo. One day when we found the honey, she took our boy for all his money. Soon after that, he flipped his lid and finished up the tale of cats and
Up in the Hall of Fame, it was the strangest mystery of the history. He never got nowhere, being a hip cook there. But here's a clue to how he made his Waterloo. Mop. One day when he found her, honey, she took the boy for all his money. Soon after that, he flipped his lid. And finish up the tale of Cap, Captain Cap. Thank you, Ella May Morris. And now back to the adventures of our G.I. Journal staff. Both Joan and Gloria Blondell have joined the Army, and we'll see them a bit later. But right now, our scene shifts to the service women's canteen. <laughs> and now, just entering the back door are two of the hosts who have come down to dance with the girls in the service. <laughs> Those two glamour boys and the service women's delight, Bob Benchley and Arthur Treacher. Here we are, Bobby. Are you going right out on the floor? No, let's stop here for a minute. I want to freshen up a bit. Uh, oh, it's crowded tonight. Uh, oh, there are two places. May I borrow your comb? Here you are. Yeah, thanks. Well, I certainly am glad to be doing my bit, but after working in a defense plant all day, my feet are killing me. Uh, well, you know, nobody forces you to come. You signed on as a junior host. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, I don't mind dancing with the blondes, but those redheads, they pinch you. Mm. <laughs> but I, I, I don't mind that. It's, it's that line they all give you, you know. The first thing they say is, you remind me of my brother. <laughs> and then, you know, they try to get your phone number. Now, be careful now, Arthur. That's against the rules, you know. Yes, but it's, it's tough not giving it to them, you know, especially... <laughs> especially when they say, you know... Uh, this may be my last night in town. <laughs> Tomorrow we ship out. <laughs> I know, the poor girl. Well, let's get out on the floor. Gee, the last time I met a couple of real nice soldiers. I hope I'm lucky tonight. How can you miss in that seer sucker suit? <laughs> Oh, look, 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 look. Two, two, uh, two soldiers just came in now. Oh, boy, I hope they start the music. I'm dying to dance, aren't you, Gloria? Oh, you said it. Hey, they're a couple of cute-looking hoes. <laughs> I like the chubby one. <laughs> what a build on him. The tall one ain't stacked up bad, either. <laughs> Gee, yours has long eyelashes, hasn't it? Yeah, I love those long eyelashes. You can dance with them and get your back scratched at the same time. <laughs> oh, look, Joni, here they come now. Hi, Hi soldiers. Hi. Hiya. Let's get on the floor. And don't step on me with those G.I. shoes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, ow. What's the matter? Your brass buttons and my low-cut sports shirt. <laughs> You want to dance, soldier? Nah, if it's all saying to you, I'd rather sit this one out. Okay, there's a table right over there. Say, it's uh, nice sitting here with you. Haven't been out on a date in a long time. You know, it gets pretty lonely in the service. Yes, I... <laughs> I know how you feel. Would you like to hold my hand, soldier? I said hold it. Don't go out on maneuvers. <laughs> You know, you remind me of my brother. Oh, here we go, yes. Well, <laughs> never mind that, soldier. Tell me, what outfit are you with? 756 field artillery. 756 field artillery? Uh-huh, why? Know somebody in that outfit? Yeah, my mother. <laughs> she's, uh, she's the supply sergeant. Oh, yes. Oh, pass the bloomer's creature. <laughs> Uh, what's this I hear about you girls getting crepe de chine fatigues next month? Oh, that's just a powder room rumor. Oh. 
But let's talk about you. You know, you're the prettiest one in the canteen. Oh, I bet you tell that to all the men. <laughs> oh, no. Tell me, what's your phone number? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but we're, we're not permitted to give out that information. <laughs> well, where do you live? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, I'll be a sport. This may be my last night in town. Tomorrow we're shipping out. I'm sorry, soldier. It uh, doesn't mean so much, but if I give you my address or phone number, you know, the, the senior host will be in a tizzy. <laughs> well, I can take you out to have a soda somewhere. Absolutely not. Well, can I just walk you home? The answer is still no. Definitely and irrevocably no. <laughs> Well, here we are. <laughs> Say, you got a nice house. Come on, let's go in. Oh, no, 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 you can't come in. You might wake up father. <laughs> How about a little goodnight kiss? Oh, I couldn't. After all, what am I to you? Just another pretty face. <laughs> Come on, now, give me a kiss. Please, please. You're scratching me with your good conduct medal. <laughs> now, come on, now, now. I, I've got to go in now. Oh, baby, let me come in and smoke just one cigarette. Mm, you're smoking now without a cigarette. <laughs> you don't understand. I like you a lot. You're different from other boys. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I, I know you're tight. You'll kiss me and go right back to the canteen and start the whole thing all over again with some other junior. Oh, honest, I wouldn't. Well, all right, then. Here. Well, what are you waiting around for? How do you get back to the canteen? <laughs> Our copy gallow song with her original song of the week, Miss Connie Hayes. We're opening G.I. Journal's original song of the week department with the strains of a brand new song written overseas and sent to us here at Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Our composer of the week is Sergeant Robert F. Mest, APO 678. So congratulations, Bob, for coming up with a swell tune. Hello, sweetheart. But I got your letter Chasing my blues away Hello, sweetheart Dreamed of you last night I dreamed we were there And I Cuddling by candlelight, I awaken to find that I was sadly mistaken. I tried my best to hide the tears that rose up inside. Joan 
Blondell back in the G.I. Journal office again. A lot of you men have written in asking us to run a column of advice to servicemen. So this week, we have selected a man who knows all the pitfalls, Robert Benchley. Ready with that column, Bob? Yes, John. Uh, this week, I'd like to give some advice to you sailors who are in training for the Navy. <laughs> You, uh, you have all doubtless seen during your walks in the country how the butterflies and bees uh, carry pollen from one flower to another. It is very dull. You should be very glad that you are not a bee or a butterfly. You know, someday a bee is going to get hold of a real book on this subject, and from then on there'll be mighty little pollen toting on it. Anyway, if you've noticed carefully how the bees carry pollen from one flower to another, you will have wondered what connection there is between this process and that of animal reproduction. I may as well tell you right now that there is no connection at all. <laughs> so your whole morning of bee stalking has been wasted. For a more practical illustration of the facts of life, let us consider hen's eggs. If you look at one of these eggs, you will see that each one is almost round, but not quite. They're more, uh, egg-shaped. <laughs> now, this is nature's way of distinguishing eggs from large golf balls. <laughs> you see, Mother Nature takes no chances. Remember that. It's a lesson all of you must learn. The egg, if I may say so, is not the only thing that has had something to do with the hen. Now, the rooster... <clears throat> is an entirely different sort of bird from the hen. He's very proud, and he has a red crest on the top of his head. This red crest is put there by nature so that the hen can see the rooster coming in a crowd and can hop into a taxi or make a previous engagement if she wants to. <laughs> but before we take up this phase of the question, or it is a question, there's no question about that, let's go back to the fish kingdom. Now, fish are probably the worst example you can find. In the first place, because they work underwater. <laughs> and in the second, because they don't know anything. <laughs> you won't find one fish in a million that has enough sense to come in out of the rain. The only way a fish can go wrong is through drink or stealing. And this makes a fish's life highly unattractive. Or after a time, one would get very tired of drinking and stealing all the time. <laughs> we have now covered the various agencies of nature for populating the earth with the lesser forms of life. We've purposely omitted any reference to the reproduction of those unicellular organisms which reproduce by dividing themselves up into two, four, eight, and so forth parts without any outside assistance at all. <laughs> this method is too silly even to discuss. <laughs> And so, young men, sailors, my message to you is this. If you ever have the urge to visit the Admiral's cabin, be sure to go in the back door. For who knows, he may be a rear Admiral. <laughs> And now those two gals and three guys, otherwise known as Mel Torme and the Mel Tones, without a song. Ain't no good I've 
got my trouble and war As sure as I know that Jordan will roar I'll get long as long as the song is born in my soul I'll never know what makes the rain to fall I'll never know what makes the grass grow tall I only know there ain't no love at all without a song. Don't let it get you down if you've lost a dream or two. Just sing a pretty theme and you will find the blues I left behind. If you're in the mood and you're all a glory about it, Nobody Just raise your voice And sing loud You'll attract a crowd Just get right into the swing Start making like Bing And you'll be surprised You can't go wrong If you sing a song Start to vocalize I'll never know What makes the rain fall I'll never know what makes the grass go tall? I only know there ain't no love at all. Dreams will come true, and you won't feel blue if you can't do without a And now G.I. Journal's drama page previews the play of the week, the tobacco shortage version of Tobacco Road, or there were feudin' mountain creatures, the Benchleys, and the Treachers. <laughs> scene opens, Lem Benchley has just crawled in the window of Zeb Treacher's cabin looking for Zeb's daughter, Joan. Hi there, Joanie. Hi, Joanie. Oh, Luke, is that you, Luke? Yeah, why be you, Joanie? I'm up here. Up where? Up here in the attic. Tap me luck, tap me luck me in up here. What fear? Fear being too popular with the boys, that's what fear. <laughs> Well, no one here popular. Look at that flimsy potato sack you're wearing. <laughs> What's wrong with my sack? Well, for one thing, you ought to take the potatoes out of it. <laughs> there ain't no potatoes in it. Just needs pressing. Oh, say, Johnny, I'm hankering for a kiss. Come on, give me a kiss, will you? I will if you give me a chaw of tobacco. Okay, there's the tobacco. Thanks. Sure tastes good. Now about my kiss. Here you are. Mmm, wow. Sam Benchley, you give me back that chaw of tobacco. <laughs> Quick, you better get. Here comes Pappy across the clearing, riding on his donkey. Which is your Pappy? The one with the long ears. I'm going to let him have it. Good up to y'all, Lem Benchley. <laughs> Don't you go shooting no more holes in me. Gophers is liable to move in. <laughs> Can't help it. Me ones and you ones is feuding. Them creatures are just standing here near you. I smell the skunk. There's another nostril for you. <laughs> what do you smell now? Oh, Pappy, why must us and the lemons have to be feuding all the time? Why can't we be friends and have supper together? No, Dada, us and the treachers and they and the benchlies is natural born hostile towards each and another <laughs> We can't never eat out of the same trough. Say, hey, Johnny, where's... Where's your sister, Gloria? She's out in the backyard, raking up leaves with her teeth. 
That gal sure has got talent. And she's pretty, too. Hey, here comes Gloria now. Hello, Fabby. Hello, Joanny. Hello. Hi there, Gloria. How about a kiss? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Lamb, I raked off your mustache. Oh, well, that's all right, gal. That's about all you've been trained for. Well, Lim Benchley, what's them horrible thing on your feet? They're called shoes, Gloria. Shoes? Yeah, they come from a cow. From a cow? You must have done some mighty fancy milking. <laughs> well, if that don't take the rag off in the bush. Lim, don't that our shoes hurt your feet? Not anymore. I cut the bottoms off them. <laughs> Johnny, I hope you don't throw a fit because I'm marrying Gloria. Uh, don't you worry about me. I got a real lover. He's the most romantic, sweetest boy in all these air hills. Who's that, little Abner? No, nope, big Abner. I heard of him. See, I'd like to meet this great lover. Well, your wish is granted because here comes that huge, handsome hunk of man right now. Hey, are you the great lover? Why, sure, I'm, I'm a Catherine, I'm a Catherine, no, no, I'm, I'm the Roman, I'm, I'm a Don, I'm a Don, I'm a Don, I'm a Charles Boy, 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 Private Sad Sack. Hey, Lim, don't you get too excited. Hey, Lim, I got a little idea. Hey, Lim, Listen, Sack, what makes you in such a great big hit with the gals? Well, you see, I, I play hard to get, yeah, hard to get, yeah, hard to get, yeah, hard to get, yeah, hard to get yeah, I play hard to get, yeah, I, I always act very to beat bash, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm very uh, sweet and steady, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sweet and steady, <laughs> I chase them up the trees. The so Zach and I are going to get married and have a big family, aren't we? Oh, oh you, you, you said it, sis. <laughs> uh, they'll be all over the front yard and all over the porch, all over the roof, all over the barn, children. No, rabbits. <laughs> hey, uh, Zach, where do we spend the honeymoon? Oh, well, we, we'll get a room at the Waldorf Astor. We'll get a house in Miami. We'll get a cabin in the high sea. High sea. High sea. We'll pitch my pup tent in Griffith Park. <laughs> After that, I guess Gloria and I had better turn the G.I. Journal over to the next week's editor. But before we say 30 for tonight, I want to thank our star reporters for getting out this edition. Bob Benchley, Arthur Treacher, L.M.A. Morris, and of course, Connie, the Meltones, Dick Harry, and Private Sad Sack, Mel Blank. This is Joan Blondell saying, so long, men. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. Thank you.